September 1938. London is tense as the crisis over Czechoslovakia threatens to plunge all Europe into war. And while the cabinet meets to decide the fate of that republic, Prime Minister Chamberlain rushes by plane to Hitler for a last-minute plea to avert war. Meanwhile, Great Britain prepares to hurl her might against the German juggernaut. Outbreaks in Czechoslovakia increase the tension. President Banish urges the Czechs to defy the Nazi demands. Prague places the Sudeten zone under martial law and continues to mobilize the Czech army, ready to meet Hitler's wrath with stubborn resistance. Rome parades her troops before Mussolini, who is readying his war machine to rush to Hitler's aid in the event that England and France attempt to interfere with German expansion. Hitler has pledged Germany to protect the Sudetes. Calling for the greatest movement of armed forces since the close of the Great War, he masses soldiers along the Czech frontier as he prepares to enforce his demands. In Paris, the cabinet has ordered partial mobilization. If war does come, the French know that their beautiful capital must face a sudden and devastating attack. Once again, the threats of an enemy have brought solidarity to a great democracy. Soldiers pour into the famous Maginot Line. Hundreds of miles of underground fortifications. While in Paris, a tense populace prepares for the zero hour. Notice, on the night of September 28th, the city of Paris will be in darkness as a precaution against air raids. Do not allow light to penetrate through windows or doors. Negligence will be met with punishment and fines. By order of J. Romine, Prefect of Police. With hardly enough gas masks to supply the demand, vehicles all over the city are besieged by clamoring men, women, and children. Six. How do you do, Madame Ronell? We've been waiting for you for two hours. This is Captain Holtz of the Medusa, Mr. Bellescue. Do you realize that if my ship doesn't clear port by dawn, it never will? This delay is driving us crazy. Crazy? <laughs> you should have seen the maritime department. Never mind that. Did you get the clearance papers? Yes. I declared your cargo as a shipment of fruit. But if they ever find out it's contraband... Let me worry about that. Please. There is a little matter of 100,000 francs. That's your affair with your partner, Petrov. Unfortunately, he's in England at the moment. Oh, but don't worry. He'll be back tonight. How do we know? This is an emergency. If war is declared, this is the last shipment of munitions we can hope to get out of France. Very well. Then suppose you pay me. You know I can't raise that much money on such short notice. Your government has raised more on shorter notice, madame. Good evening. Hand them over. I should have known. Charlotte, you're a wonder. What's wrong? Blank papers. Why the... Monsieur Petroff's residence? This is Charlotte Ronell. When are you expecting Mr. Petroff? Not before tomorrow, I think, madame. I am a poultry man. My hands, they will not lay in the dark. You must obey the order. I have said oh, it a thousand times. Look, monsieur, all I want is just one little red light in front of my house. The street is all torn up, and my poor husband will fall in the sewer. 
Well, madame, he is your husband. Fish him out. Et moi, how can I give a show in the park without lights? I'll be ruined. You'll be ruined. Tomorrow night, all Paris may be ruined, and all you can think about is... I am going to see Monsieur Romain. No, 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 stand back. You cannot go in there. Monsieur Romain is busy. He is engaged. Go away, or I will call the police. Come on, put them out. Everybody go. Right now. Gens, husbands, sewers, gas masks. Who are you? Monsieur, I must see the prefect immediately on most important business. You and a thousand others. Do you think the prefect has nothing to My do? My business is concerning Monsieur Petrov. Petrov? Oh, that's different. But still, you cannot see the prefect. He is in conference on matters of the utmost importance. The safety of the Republic. <laughs> Charlie, a good story is always good, even after 20 years. Comrades of the intelligence service, it doesn't seem like 20 years since we dined at the Jumping Rabbit and promised ourselves this reunion. Of course, we were thinner then and, oh, very much more handsome. <laughs> we had no girls in our life. Remember, Romain, you had Mimi and Yvonne. Oh, yes, of course. I wonder if they're still there. <laughs> Most ironic. That reunion to celebrate end of one war finds us waiting zero hour, which may start a new one. You're right, Charlie. Uh, gentlemen, I give you a toast. Tomorrow, may it bring peace. No, 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 monsieur. It is impossible. I will not allow you in here. I can't allow it. Pardon, Papa. I did not wish to disturb you, but you see, he is most insistent. I won't take more than a moment of your time, sir. I'm Monsieur Petrov's butler. Well, this letter came for him in the afternoon mail. He is in London, so I brought it to you for investigation. I'm quite sure the handwriting is that of his former secretary, Senor Madero. Madero? You remember? Petrov preferred embezzlement charges against him two days ago. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Is it anything serious, sir? No, the usual thing, threats. But the police are looking for Madero already, so we'll not worry about this until your master returns to Paris. Thank you, Monsieur. One moment, please. May I ask question? Why, of course. Why inquire about contents of letter when you already know same? I... I don't understand, sir. Mucilage on flap of envelope indicate letter sealed twice. Why, so it does. Why did you open this letter? Say, I hear. The war has started. Thing off. You look like an elephant with the mumps. But, but, but we will all be cast, annihilated, asphyxiated. Don't worry, my valiant one. This is just a drill to prepare the people for what may happen before morning. Now take those things out of here and don't disturb us again. Bien, Papa. Uh, you may go, but don't leave the city. I may want to ask you some questions. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, by the way, Charlie, have you made reservations for your passage to America? Uh, have not prepared for emergency, like man who buys suit with only one pair of pants. Well, we may have a little trouble, but, oh, we're breaking up a little while, and I'll see what I can do. Yes. The Bolivia said at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning in Seasville. I will take second class, sir. I'm very sorry, sir. I can accommodate you even if you offer a million francs. I must get my family to New York. The next boat will not leave for six days, sir. Monsieur Romain, if you'd given me only a day's notice, but now I couldn't accommodate the president of France himself if he wished to leave. Why would the president wish to leave? Mm, no reason. I used it uh, merely as an example. Well, don't do it again. It's dangerous. The enemy would use it for propaganda. Uh, monsieur, if one of you wants a cabin on the Bolivia to Panama, I have one that I will sell. Well, how did you get it? Oh, quite honestly, it's my own reservation. You can have it for 15,000 francs. 15,000 francs? Well, let me see that. That's 
First war profiteer like early bird. Look for a big fat worm. It's a hold up, Charlie. But if that's the best thing we can Please do, Please don't I... buy it. He offered it to me first. Oh, but you tell me before that you would not pay that amount. Well, I've changed my mind. Please let me have it. You don't know how much it means to me. We'll gladly defer to lady in distress. Thank you. Thank you. You sure you are the money? Of course I have. Sincerely hope journey have happy ending. I've seen that girl before someplace. Papa. Papa. The defense counsel wants you immediately to arrange police details for tonight. Oh, Paris will need it. With the city in darkness, what a holiday it will be for crime. I'm sorry, Charlie, but this puts an end to our evening together. Perhaps can meet later. I'll phone you. Marcel, see that girl at the table? Oh, she is very pretty. Where have I met her before? Who knows? Well, I don't, but I'd like to. Well, so long, Charlie. Marcel will see you to your hotel. And look after the office while I'm gone, and see that you don't get into any trouble. Bien, Papa. Shall we go? Yes. But after that girl, there must be some reason why my papa noticed her. Fifteen thousand, that is correct. Oh, I forget to tell you, this is a double cabin. There's another person in it, a gentleman. That doesn't matter. The ticket isn't for me, it's for my... a relative, a man. Oh, then why didn't he come himself for the ticket? It doesn't concern you. Oh, I see. The police. I thought so. Well, let me warn you, mademoiselle. If he travels on his own passport, he will fall right into their hands. But he mustn't. Isn't there something I can do? Meet me at this address later and bring with you 10,000 francs more. 10,000 francs? What for? You want your relative to get away, don't you? Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Here. Where did she go? Who? Never mind. Follow that taxi. What taxi? Oh, where did it go? How do I know? Do I have the eyes of a cat? A fine state of affairs when they make you turn off all the lights. Uh -huh. And les yeux d'un chat, eh? They come down, j'ai pu... Excuse. 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 What, what is difficulty? Because of this blind man, that girl has disappeared without even a trace. Correction, please. Marie Dubon, Hotel des Voyageurs. Aha! Uh -huh. But how did you get it, Monsieur Chan? Lady most anxious to secure ticket left address with clerk. But it is marvelous, Monsieur Chan. Such deduction. And now, Hotel des Voyageurs, my friend with eyes of a cat. Yes? There is a lady here for you. Marie. Tony. Sapristi. You have the curtains open. The light will be seen outside. Do you want me to get fined? And smoke. Oh, you'll kill yourself. One cigarette after another. My old man died from it. Angina pectoris. And only 46 years old. All right, all right. Uh, and you must sign the register. Two days you have been here. And still, I don't know who you are. If the police find out, I lose my license. I'll do it later, please. That's what you said before. Why do all those things have to happen to me? I nearly went insane waiting for you. Darling, I couldn't get here any sooner. But here's your ticket. Tomorrow you'll be on a boat for Panama. Panama? Yes, and I've arranged for a false passport. I'm not going. Why should I run away? I'm innocent. Well, I know that, dear, but we can't prove it. Well, I will somehow. I wrote to Petrov this morning and warned him to tell the truth or I'd settle with him if it was the last thing I ever did. Oh, Tony, you shouldn't have. He'll turn your letter over to the police. 
Why, if you're arrested now and war starts, it may be months before you get a trial. Oh, darling, don't you see? You must go away. I'll follow you as soon as I can, and we'll start all over again in a new country. Hotel de Voyageurs. Monsieur Chan, I think you had better remain here. This is a very delicate situation. Cherchez la femme? Oui. As number two son would say, this is right up your alley. Alley? Well, yes, that would be very good. But uh, this time I will try the front door. Shut the door. Don't let the light shine outside. Never mind, sir. Never mind. If I am fined, will you pay for it? Madame, are you the concierge? No, we are slug. I own the place. Now, don't evade the issue. What room has Marie Dumont? I never heard of her. Oh, oh, then you deny she is here. Let me see your register. No, you don't. Madame, j'insiste à voir. Je ne veux pas. Madame, donnez-moi ce... Vous ne touchez pas ça. Non, je ne veux pas. Je ne veux pas. Je ne veux pas. Madame, j'insiste à voir. Non, je ne veux pas. Je ne veux pas. Non, je ne veux pas. Madame, give it to me. Who are you to order me around? Who am I? Madame, I am the police. Without a badge? I've been robbed. You are fake. You are trying to hold me up. Baptiste! Go on, call your Baptiste. I will take care of him. Madame, I had a badge. It was right here. I know I have it. It, it was with me when I left the office. I, I, I assure you, Madame, I am a member of, of the police force. I assure you that there is a badge somewhere. If you will give me the opportunity, please. This is an outrage. Let go of me. So sorry. Perhaps should have tried Ali. Wait, Monsieur Chan. That Baptiste does not know with whom he has to deal. Here, let go of me. Let go, I say. Please, please. Have two strikes now. Recommend you consider self out. Monsieur Chan, I deputize you in the name of the Republic to come to my assistance. Happy to say great honor unnecessary. Young lady just left hotel. Collusion. That is what they are guilty of. But they won't get away with this. They'll get five years for this. Monsieur Chan, taxi, taxi. passport as I ever turn out. Remember, your friend is now Senor Antonio Castillo, a coffee planter from Bogota, Colombia. You're sure nothing can go wrong? Oh, not a chance. Here's your money. I'm sorry, the price is now 50,000 francs. 50,000? But you told me 10. Well, the price has gone up. In the present emergency, your relative is not the only one who wants to escape the police. There are others who will pay my price. But I can't raise that much money. You're trying to blackmail me. The police. If you are us, mademoiselle, remember you are here to have keys made for your baggage. Open the door. Well, do you know you're breaking the law? Huh? Your lights are shining through the curtains into the street. Oh. Haven't you heard the orders? Yes, I have. It is an accident. It will not happen again, I give you my word. See that it doesn't. Go back to your work. Now, make up your mind. You can see that I am in danger every minute. The price I ask for my work is none too high. If you cannot raise oh, the please money... please wait. Then... I'll get it for you somehow. Just give me a little time. Yes, of course, mademoiselle. I'll give you till midnight.
Yes? Petro speaking. Everything worked exactly as you planned. I sold her the steamship ticket earlier. She just left here to raise the 50,000 francs for the passport. So you can expect her at your place any time. That's fine. She's been rather difficult. I think this will do it. Very well. See me tomorrow. Goodbye. Uh, wait here, Philippe. Monsieur Petrov, I didn't expect you tonight. I chartered a special plane. Have you dined, sir? Yes, before leaving London. Have Henri like the furnace is cold? I'll do it. Henri has been called up for his regiment. Henri is to be sacrificed to the god of war, eh? He's doing his bit, sir. <laughs> My son is leaving tonight, too. We were just on our way to the station. Is he here? Yes, sir. Would, would you care to see him, sir? Yes, yes, bring him in. Uh, Philippe. This is Monsieur Petrov. How do you do, sir? What a fine-looking boy, Antoine. Your country must be panic-stricken to be calling infants to the colors. Why, I'm 19, sir. I wasn't much more than that when I went to the trenches. I suppose he comes back like you, a cripple. It's a chance a soldier must take, sir. Ah, you Frenchmen are fools. Why do you want to fight Czechoslovakia's battles? Because they're fighting for liberty, and ours may be threatened next. Liberty. The revolution taught you to bray like a lot of jackasses about liberty. You've been doing it ever since. If that's the way you feel about us, I'd prefer not to remain in your service. Please accept my notice oh, immediately. Oh, here, here, Antoine. You mustn't take me so seriously. I didn't mean to offend you. Now, you take your boy to the station. I shan't lead you again tonight. Thank you, sir. Is there anything you wish before I leave? Yes. You may put some champagne on ice. I'm expecting a special visitor. That's all. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, give your boy a bottle to take with him to the station. Good luck to you, young man. I hope you come back a hero. Thank you, sir. Good night. Oh, excuse me, sir. I forgot to inform you another threatening letter came from Senor Madero this afternoon. I took it to the police. To the police? Why did you do that? You were away, sir. Well, never mind. I'll see about it. Thank you, sir. Nine forty-five. Why, it gives us an hour together. Let's walk to the station. Do you think you can make it there? Surely. And oh, Philippe, did you pack cootie powder in your kit? You'll have plenty of them to fry too. And rhubarb pills. Oh, they're more important than toothpaste. <laughs> Thank you, Philippe. Eh bien. That gets free to both peg like the butler. But the master! Oh, he will not stay up much longer. We better get busy on the cellar window. You stay here, Lola, and give us a flash if anything goes wrong. I'll be here, don't worry. <laughs> Your cab engaged? Uh, no, monsieur, but I was looking for... Never uh, mind, I'm in a hurry. Take me over to the left bank and stop at the nearest telephone. Yeah, monsieur. Hello? Oh, it's you. Where are you? I'm sorry I had to pass those blank sheets of paper off on you, but I... I have no time to waste. Where are the clearance papers now? I just left them with Petrov. I've settled my business with them most satisfactorily. I hope you can, too. Blowns, brunettes, redheads. I have searched every photograph in the records, and there is not one like that girl. Most unfortunate. Already hands a watch reach out to grasp new day. Oh, no, don't go, Monsieur Chan, please. You know, I must confess, I'm somewhat uneasy. This is a most unusual night in Paris, and... Excuse me. Hello? Yes? Yes? Yes! It's... it's... It... Hello? Hello? Say a bong up. Monsieur Chan, I knew it. It is a catastrophe, a calamity. What shall I do? 
I know. I'll call Papa. Hello. Give me a calamity. No, 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 no. I mean, give me Monsieur Romain at the Department of Public Safety. I'll rush it. Three whole wires. Yes, speaking. Oh, what do you want? I'm, I'm busy. But I am trying to tell you, Papa. It is Monsieur Petrov. He has just been murdered in his house on the Rue d'Avignon. Petrov? Well, must I drop everything because one man has been murdered? By morning, all of Paris may be bound. Follow the usual routine, get all the details, and I'll be back at the office later. Goodbye. Goodbye. He said goodbye. Now everything is left in my hands. Wish you most conspicuous success. Good night. Good night. Good night? No, no, Mr. Chan, you can't leave me, please. Always I have wanted to be a detective, but Papa keeps me only a secretary. Can sympathize with honorable parent. I'm now fugitive from five sons with same ambition. Oh, but Monsieur Romain is not my parent. I call him Papa because he is my godfather. My real father is chief of police of Bucharest, Romania. He sent me here to learn French police methods. Oh, Monsieur Chan, tonight is my one big chance to show what I can do. Such a crisis may never come again. You must help me. What shall I do? Would suggest you use telephone, order photographers, fingerprint men, and motor car to take you all to Mr. Petrov's house. Exactly, exactly. Thank you. Hello. I mean, hello. Would appear victim trying to call assistance when shot. Observe. Telephone dangling from hook. Tracer of telephone call would establish exact time of death, also number called. Orders a telephone exchange to get us a report. We wish you. Also observe. Empty shell. Ejected from Luger automatic pistol. But the gun is missing. And so is the motive. Open safe suggests robbery as motive. But Camellia lying on floor indicate different type of visitor. Do you know, please, if anyone call on your master tonight? No, monsieur. He gave me the evening off so I could see my son leave with his regiment. What was the exact time, my friend? And remember, I want the truth. The troop train left at exactly 11.31, sir. I started to walk home, but the streets were so dark, I decided to take the subway. Took the subway? I arrived at about 12.30. It might have been 12.31. And let myself in the back way. 12.31? I saw a light in here and presume Monsieur Petrov was still up. So I came in to see if there was anything he wanted before I retired. I found him lying there just as you see him now. All door and windows securely locked when you returned to house? I'm sure they were, sir. I checked them before I left. Then it was an inside job. I can see it all. The burglar was lying in wait outside. When the coast was clear, someone let him in. They sneak in here to the safe. It's a combination. Which one of them knew? They open it. They're filling their pockets with money and jewels when... A noise. Monsieur Petrov. He hears them. He comes in. He confronts the criminals. He denounces them. He picks up the telephone to call the police. There is a terrific struggle. They shoot him. Ah, ah. The burglar escape. Et voilà. It is an open book. Confess, my friend. Who was your confederate? My confederate? Monsieur, this man is insane. Don't evade the issue. Who is here tonight? Excuse one moment, please. Was it custom for discharged secretary, Mr. Madero, to wear camellia? He never wore one, sir. But one of Monsieur Petrov's business associates always wore a camellia. Who, please? Mr. Belescu. But I can't say he was expected tonight. Never mind that. Can you say where he lives? At the Hotel Versailles. Belescu, Hotel Versailles. Telephone headquarters. Have this Belescu brought to my office. Uh -huh. What are you trying to pick up? I was merely going to tie my shoelace, sir. Oh. Can we have assistance, please? Oh, it's very kind of you, sir. It's a bit difficult with my leg. Souvenir of last war? Bad uh, done, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, one moment, please. Prodigal two franc piece find odd resting place. Uh, uh, thank you again, sir.
How long has he been dead? Approximately an hour, monsieur. Well, we'll make sure when we get the telephone company's report. The shot was fired at about three paces. I've already phoned the coroner to pick up the body. Monsieur. Monsieur. Pick up the body. Uh, 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 uh. Where are you going? To close the door after the doctor, sir. Oh. Uh, then you can order me a taxi. Oui, monsieur. And you orders, monsieur? Orders? Uh, let me see. Ah, yes, you can stay on guard in front of the house. Oui, monsieur. And now, monsieur Chan, we can go. Monsieur Chan. Monsieur Chan. Monsieur Chan. Monsieur Chan. Monsieur Chan! Where's Monsieur Chan? In the cellar, sir. In the cellar? Yes, sir. That's under the house. Monsieur Chan! Monsieur Chan! What are you doing here? Oh-ho! That window is broken! Excellent deduction. I'm certain worthy parent would be proud. Thank you. I can see it all. It was an outside job. The burglar broke that window, he reached in, he unhooked the hook, he got into the cellar. And then he began to creep upstairs. Correction, please. And did not creep upstairs immediately. All right, he did not creep upstairs. He... What did he do? Evidence indicate not one culprit, but two who makes themselves quite at home while waiting for household to retire. Note, bottle of cognac recently disposed of. Oh, the brandy of Napoleon. What exquisite taste. Quite correct. One was very fastidious person. Observe, he placed trot on end of dusty bench where he sat. Also used glass for drinking. Marvelous. Other burglar, not so meticulous, he sat in dust and drank from broken neck a bottle, possibly spilling cognac on shirt or scarf. It is incredible. <laughs> now all we have to do is take the fingerprints from this bottle. I am ruined. The evidence is destroyed. What will Papa say? He is right. I am a mouse, a dunce, a wooden head. What shall I do? Possibly can suggest another way to locate culprit. You can, ow. Birds never divide worm until safe in nest. Birds? Worm? What have they to do with this? In every city there are roosts where birds of feather congregate. Oh, I see. You are right. And I know exactly where to look for them. Come with me, Monsieur Chan. What are you doing here? Your taxi is waiting, sir. Thank you so much. Why bother me? I haven't broken any air raid orders. Look at my curtains, they're close like a cork in a bottle. Step aside, my friend. Mr. Chen, this is the last place I know where to look. If we don't find him here, I am lost. That one is Guillaume the Weasel, from six generations of cooks. And Victor the Jeep. His mother was guillotine. And Gaston the... Mr. Chan, what is it? Would be interested to learn history of two gentlemen playing card. Ah, yes. The clean one is Gentleman Max, jewelry thief and lady killer. The dirty one is Alex. Wait, Monsieur Chan. The fastidious one and the sloppy fellow. Voila, we have found them. Please, patience, big sister to wisdom.
staring at it. How can I keep my mind on the cards? Sorry to intrude. Is Burgundy favorite drink? Because I put it food that you said all the Tell the gentleman. Sure, Burgundy is our drink. We can't afford any better. Excuse, please. Recent stain on scarf. Most expensive Napoleon brandy. Explain, please. Napoleon? Well, I never had a drink of it in my life. That's soup. Now, look here. We have done nothing. We are minding our own business, having an honest game of cards. Most honest. While Ace of Hearts play hooky from Pat. So, that's why you have been winning all night. He framed me. I didn't have it. And I suppose you didn't have it when you were winning in the cellar. What cellar, please? Why, I, uh... I can tell you, my friend, it's the same cellar where you drank the cognac. Monsieur Petrov's cellar. You fathead. Take this. Silence! Not another word unless I say it. Now back to your tables, all of you. Eh, eh, mon vieux, dont vous m'avez tapé sur le menton, eh? Ah, no, no, mais c'était bon. pas à vous, c'était ah, pour lui. Bon. What did you do with the loot? We gave it to Lola as soon as we came out of the house. Who is Lola, please? She's on lookout. Where is Lady now? At the station. To say goodbye to her sweetheart and his regiment. Never mind, Monsieur Chen. She cannot escape us. And now, which one of you fired the shot? Fired the shot? What shot? Oh, do not deny it. Which one of you murdered Petrov? What? Murder him? Why, we didn't even see him. Why, we, we wouldn't hurt a fly. We are just plain house breakers. <laughs> now, now, look, sir, I I'll tell the truth. We were hiding in the cellar, waiting for the house to quiet down. Then we, we sneak upstairs and, and sneak into the studies. Oh, uh, just when we came in here, a clock started to strike midnight. It was funny. The, the lights were on and the safe was open. But there wasn't anyone around. So, so we went to work. There wasn't much money, but there was a lot of paper. It looked like uh, government security and some jewelry. And we got out almost before the clock had stopped striking. That's right. And we didn't see anybody. How could we shoot him? One moment, please. Someone have been here searching since we left. What? Observe. Door to safe, now partly closed. Articles on desk in confusion. You're right. Who has been in here? No one, sir. I never left the house. Never was a gendarme on guard outside. Then it was you. What were you after? But I give you my word, I know nothing about it. Maybe I do. There was a beautiful girl. Went in the front door, just as we sneak out through the garden. Can you give description of lady, please? Well, it was pretty dark, but she was young and chic, and she has a good figure. Uh, no, she was skinny, with fat legs. Tu vas me dire maintenant que je She's young. She's skinny. She has a good figure. She has fat legs. But who was she? Excuse, please. With guard outside, Perhaps lady may still be concealed in house. Would suggest thorough search. Correct. Keep an eye on these two. Oui, monsieur. Monsieur Jan, follow me. Stop. Halt. That was in the garden. What is the matter? Turn off the flashlight, please. A woman came out of the house and ran across the garden. I ordered her to stop, then fired into the air to frighten her, but she kept on running. Well, what are you standing here for? Find her, bring her back. And now, my friend, who was the woman, and what were you two looking for? But I've already told you Excuse that... Excuse me, please. Have knowledge of ladies who enjoy master's hospitality? Uh, not much, sir. Monsieur Petrov was very discreet. No matter how discreet, he was a bachelor, eh? He would have his little book. Oh, yes, of course, sir. It's on his desk. I thought so. I have one too. Get it. Was it a woman? Mm -hmm. You see, we told you the truth. How unusual. Take them to headquarters. Voyons, monsieur. Annette, Adele, Babette, Blanche, Celeste. And with telephone numbers. Oh, what a loss Monsieur Petrov will be to Paris. Quite evident sugar daddy attract many butterflies. Sugar daddy? 
<laughs> that is very good. Well, where's the woman? She escaped in the dark, monsieur. Shall I send out an alarm? Yes, and I want you also to send out an alarm for every woman in this book. I will question them all. Personally. May I have it, Monsieur Chen? One moment, please. Last entry in book, very interesting. Hotel des Voyageurs. But there is no name with it. That is the place where we trace the girl my papa was looking for. Most strange, that random trail find bypass to Mr. Petrov notebook. There is something behind it. Let us go, Monsieur Chen. And see that you don't leave the house. The gendarme has orders to shoot. Would suggest before leaving house you order all telephone call relayed to police headquarters. Ah, yes. In and out of the house. Telephone the operator. And now, Monsieur Chen, Hotel des Voyageurs. Where have you been? I had to get a breath of air. I know, darling, but you shouldn't have. The police might have recognized Don't worry, you. Nobody saw me. Did you get the passport? Yes, it's, it's right here. Everything will be all right now. What'd you pay for it? 10,000 francs. <laughs> Where did you get all that money? Oh, on my rings and bracelets. The pawn shops are still open in Montmartre. They gave you 10,000 francs for those? Well, I, I had some that I borrowed. Henri, you've been so wonderful. I, I don't know what to say. Oh, Tony, let's get out of this awful place. It can't be too soon for me. We'll go to Sherbrooke tonight. There'll be less chance of the police recognizing you in the darkness, and you can get aboard the boat early in the morning. I hate leaving you. Well, it'll only be for a little while. Here, sign your passport. And remember, your name's Castillo now. You mustn't let them trip you up on it. I feel as though the whole world has been lifted off my shoulders. Hurry up and pay the bill now. I'll get a taxi. Right. Checking out. No? Did you two have a fight? How much do I owe you? Mm. Counting tonight, it's uh, 45 francs. And, and you must sign the register. Now, madame. It is you, back again. Baptiste! Wait, woman, this time I have with me a badge. Look out. What up, big hippopotamus? What do you want with me? I am a poor widow. I own a decent house. I want to see your register, and it had better be in order. Monsieur, monsieur, there is your change. Allow me. You see, I am an honest woman. Cool. You are leaving to join regiment? No, oh, I'm a foreigner. I'm getting out of Paris. You tell me, I have the tax. It's... Monsieur Chen, there she is. The girl we are looking for. What do you want her for? We want her for... What do we want her for, Monsieur Chen? We'd like to ask you questions, if the lady would be kind enough to answer. Why, certainly. Steamship ticket purchased earlier in the evening was for some or this gentleman? It was for me. Most strange to be leaving now for a boat which does not sail until noon. Well, I may see passport, please. Thank you. Antonio Castillo, Bogota, Colombia. Yes, uh, he's a coffee planter going home by way of the canal. I've visited Bogota many times. <laughs> View of city most impressive as steamship comes up large river. Yes. What is name of river cannot recollect? Do you mean the Columbia River? Of course. Everyone knows that. But why ask about scenery now? Because Bogota is inland city, not reached by steamship and has no large river. What do you mean by saying there is a river where there is no river? Most evident young gentleman quite unfamiliar with country claimed as birthplace. Then your passport is false. Do you know what that means? He had nothing to do with it. I got the passport. I can explain if you'll listen. Interruption, please. More important young gentleman, explain this signature. 
Handwriting strangely resembles that on threatening letters sent to Mr. Petrov. Tony Madero. So you are the embezzler. No, he isn't a thief. Petrov made those charges just to get rid of him. Because I objected to the attention he was paying my wife. We had a quarrel and... Continue, please. Well, I warned him. If he didn't leave her alone, I'd expose his undercover dealings with foreign governments. Then he'd frame me on a charge of embezzlement. So that was it. And for revenge, you went to his house tonight to settle your score with him. No, he didn't. I didn't leave this hotel room for two days, except to... Don't believe him, gentlemen. He did go out tonight. Well, he only went out for a walk. He, he didn't go to Petrov's. He couldn't have. How do you know? Well, I was here. He wasn't gone long enough. She's lying. She was out too. So, and where had you gone? To Petrov's. That isn't true. Don't contradict the law. She was seen going in there tonight. What do you mean? Well, you should know, my friend, when your wife visits another man. Arrest those two. Take them away. Hello, Sophie. Oh, you know, Monsieur Chen. Ha, I only said what I said in order to get him to confess. And look what I got. As number two son would say, you ask for it. Huh? Well, you must admit, the case is solved in exactly two hours and 26 minutes. A record and a feather in my hat. Before inserting feather, Please consider possibility that Mr. Petrov not anxious to have police capture Mr. Madero. What do you mean? This address in Petrov confidential notebook, yet he not advise police of same. Hello? There is something funny about that. Someone wants to speak with Marcel Spivak. I will take it, thank you. Hello, what is it? Hello, I can't hear it. Please take a minute. Hello. Oh, monsieur, they are here. I can't hear anything. The women from Petrov's book. Oh, the women. I don't need them anymore. Dismiss them. After all the trouble we took to find them? Yes, dismiss them, dismiss them. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please, ladies, please. Now, I am terribly sorry. But it was all a mistake. As for you two, I will settle with you later for concealing a fugitive. Monsieur Chen? Monsieur Chen? Where did he go? Monsieur Chen? Oh, anyway, we were lucky he did not find out that fellow wasn't registered. Oh, oh monsieur. Uh, please, uh, I did not know you were still here. Oh, don't be hard on me. I am only a poor woman. Well, overlook indiscretion. If you will show me the room occupied by Mr. Madero. Oh, certainly, yes. Uh, come with me. Uh, oh, on the second floor. Uh, watch your steps. Be careful. My husband died uh, of angina pectoris, you know. Uh, smoked himself to death. And only 46 years old, and now I have to do all the work, and you know I have to go up and Excuse down the... Excuse, please. Would know if either lady or gentleman make telephone call to Mr. Petrov? No, they did not use the phone. Oh, I would know if they did. I always listen. Would also know if locksmith was summoned here today? Locksmith? No. What for? All they had was a few suitcases and no trunks. Thank you so much. to disturb. Must see you at once on urgent business. What business? Concerning lady who was here tonight, Madame Madero. Come in. Come in so I can turn on the light. Thank you. Oh, 
I've seen you before. Yes, when you sell lady ticket at steamship office. Oh, that's right. Well, I got no more tickets if that's what you want. Visit concerns some work you do for lady. Work? Oh, yes, I make her a key. Was key for front door of house? No, it was for a trunk. Oh. For locksmith, you have oddly assorted equipment. What are you looking for? Come out with it. Seek information regarding passport you supply for lady's husband. Passport? Did she tell you that? No, but nitric acid used in making printing plates and engraving press. Honolulu police. So, you let in your light shine through your curtains again. Do you think the orders are forever wide in Paris but you? Monsieur, it was unintentional. That's what you said before. Say, what is the matter in there? He's an old friend. He drink too much wine. You know how it is. We were sitting up together talking about will there be a war. I'm an old soldier. Oh, give me another chance, will you? I'll watch the lights. All right, now. See that you do, or you'll go to jail. This is the last time I'll tell you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, monsieur. <clears throat> See what else he has on him. Someone is calling the Petrov number. Well, you know the police order. Connect them with the Department of Investigation. Wait. Why are you trying to make us admit we were at Petrov's house tonight? We weren't there no matter what you try to prove. If you don't believe us, bring Petrov here and let him face us. Bring him here? Of course. <laughs> Hello? What? Someone is calling Petrov's house. Oh, yes! Put them on! Now we will get some hair. Uh, hello? Monsieur Petrov cannot come to the phone. This is the butler speaking. Will you leave a message? Just tell him to be careful. The police are checking up on Madeira's wife. Hello? Hello? Have that call traced. Yes, monsieur. I won't give you much longer to tell me why you are here. Confucius has said, a wise man question himself, a fool others. Perhaps there is some other way to get it out of you. Tighten in those cords. You know a lot about this acid. Did you ever have a taste of it? Acid, very poor oil to loosen stubborn tongue. Oh, we'll see about that. Accardi! Open up, it's the police! Please, apprehend men who escape out back. What kept you? Do you realize I've only two hours left until sailing time? The clearance papers weren't at Petrov's. Bell asked you. He tricked you again. Tomorrow the French will discover my cargo and I'll be... You'll be. What do you think will happen to me? You go to the airport, have the plane ready. If I can get there in an hour, we can still make sure Bruegel get the cargo out. Once again, madame, how much did you pay for the passport? She's already told you. 10,000 francs. Why do you ask the same things over and over again? In there. What is this? He had his baggage packed and was trying to escape. I wasn't trying to escape. I had already given Monsieur Petrov notice that I was leaving his service. Besides, I could see... No and but why was it so important that you had to leave in the middle of the night? Well, I... I... Uh, 
I've been arrested before. No, no, no. no. Oh, the girlfriend who played look out for you. You're a fine couple of imbeciles. Well, well, Lola, we say... Oh, sit down. Down. Where's the loot? Here. Government bonds, jewelry, and 6,000 francs. 6,000? There was 15. Search her. Hello. Well, did you expect my Henri to go to the wall without a sou? Henri! Stop it! 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 And no, sir, one? What's this all about? Why was I brought here? Why were you brought here? Who are you? My name is Belescu. Belescu? Belescu. Belescu! Yes, Belescu. And I demand to see the prefect at once. I want to see him too. Where is, Where, is Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? I wish I knew. I wish he was here. I wish someone was here. Have you found Monsieur Chan? Present. Monsieur Chan! Monsieur Chan, where have you been? What happened? I've been quite busy removing unworthy head from noose supplied by this honorable gentleman. He is one who furnished Madame Madero with false passport. Oh, so we now have them all. Everyone. You see, Monsieur Chan, I too have been busy. Illustrious parent will be very proud. Most interesting assembly. See here, you have no right to hold me without a formal complaint. Excuse, please. Camellia in buttonhole tells me gentleman's name is Velescu. Why, yes, he is Monsieur Petrov's business associate. Flower, you now wear quite fresh. Well, what about it? You wear another flower earlier this evening when you visit Mr. Petrov's house. Why, yes, I... I lost that one somewhere. Say, I know these fellow. I saw him coming out of Petrov's house while I was waiting for Max and Alex. I remember this ring was shining in the dark. Aha, uh -huh, that proves it. You are there tonight. Well, why should I deny it? I went there on business at about 11.30. What time you finish business, please? Around midnight. Yes, it was. The chimes had just struck as I was leaving in a taxi. Same taxi you arrive in? No, it was one that brought another fellow who got there about five minutes before this man came out. And no there one? Who was that? I don't know. He went around the side of the house, and the taxi cab driver stayed there looking for something. That's right. I remember he told me that. Can identify first visitor among people in this room? to do? Make a stool pigeon out of me? I don't squeal the cops. You don't have to, little one. You have told me enough. Now, my friend, it is as I thought. You knew your wife was going to Petrov's. You are jealous. You followed her no, there. No, I didn't. One moment, please. After Mr. Santel gave you passport, you return directly to hotel? Oh, uh, yes. When did lady leave your shop? Which time? She was there twice. Twice? He, he didn't have the passport ready the first time. It was ready, all right, but when she came the first time, she owed only 10,000 francs. Passport cost more than that? Sure it did. You told me you paid only 10,000 for it. She paid 50,000. Petrov told me to boost the price. What is Petrov's interest in passport? Well, he wanted to make her come to him for the money. He's lying. My wife wouldn't go to Petrov. I didn't go there. I wouldn't ask him for anything. He was the lowest... Please. Would repeat last sentence? I said he was... Was? How you know Mr. Petrov dead? No one has told you? Dead? Petrov? Well, madame? Please. Truth is only path out of tangled web. Well, I did go there. Marie. He gave me the money, but he told me he knew where Tony was hiding. And unless I came back to him tonight, he'd turn my husband over to the police. And you returned shortly after midnight? Yes, but not as he expected. I had a revolver and I... And you killed him? No. She didn't, sir. What? She couldn't have. I saw her come into the house after I discovered my master dead. Explain, please. 
I was just about to call the police when I heard the front door open. I was afraid it might be the murderer, so I drew back to watch. Madame Madero came in. When she saw Mr. Petrov's body, she ran away in terror. What was reason for withholding information? I didn't wish to involve her because I knew she was innocent. Oh, oh very chivalrous of you, monsieur, very. But why were you trying to escape? I was not escaping. I had a disagreement with my master. Ah, uh -huh, you had a quarrel. He made some insulting remarks about our country. I resented them because I had good reason to believe that he and Monsieur Bellescue were actively engaged in aiding our enemies. I told you that. Those accusations are ridiculous. Our business was always legitimate. What was nature of business which require midnight visit, please? It was a shipment of perishable fruit. It had to leave tonight because if war were declared, it would be kept in port and Petrov would lose the entire cargo. And you were not part owner of Sam? No, I arranged for the cargo on a commission basis. Petrov paid me 100,000 francs. Why, I have the money. You were about to offer evidence of money? Now, just a minute. What right is your wallet, monsieur? I had most of that money with me before I went to Petrov's. Four hundred thousand francs. Say, did I tell you the safe was open before we got to it? And he's the fellow that robbed it before we did. I won't stand for this. Now I see it all. Aeroplanes. They are here. Gas masks. Where are the gas masks? Turn out the lights. for excitement. Merely a patrol of French army planes. Oh. Put on lights, please. False alarm. French army planes. Well, there is nothing like being prepared, Monsieur Chen. Where is Mr. Belescu? 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 Belescu! He's gone! Escape! After him! Catch him! Put him behind bars, everyone! Let not another one escape! One moment. 400,000 francs, please. He's a magician. Hello, send out an alarm. His name is Belescu. Cover every street in the neighborhood. Use every man you can spare. How can I explain to my papa that the murderer slipped through my fingers? Maybe that is it now. What can I say? To describe bitter medicine will not improve its flavor. Oh, you talk to him for me, please. Hello? One moment. It is report on call Petrov making when shot. Continue, please. He was dictating a telegram. I'll repeat it. Medusa, Cherbourg. Cargo must leave tonight before possible embargo. Papers secured from Bolescu. I'm sending them immediately by. That's where the message was interrupted. Have record of time when message sent? It is stamped six minutes past 12. Thank you so much. Six minutes after 12. But everyone with questions says they left at the stroke of midnight. I never saw so many Cinderella's. One of them lied. Quite correct. Person interested in clearance papers. Clearance papers? But why should anyone want to commit murder over a boatload of fruit? Fear of embargo mentioned in message would seem to indicate cover-up for more deadly cargo. Oh, then Madero and the butler were right. It's munitions, that's what it is, to be used against our own soldiers. We have uncovered the greatest spy ring in France. We are heroes. We will get the Croix de Guerre with bombs. Come on, Monsieur Chan, let us go. Where? 
I don't know. Then, before pinning medal on self, would suggest you notify authorities to hold ship. Right. Charlotte, what are you doing here? What were you looking for? You didn't give the Medusa's papers to Petra? Yes, I did. If you didn't get them, he double-crossed you. He had them, he... So that's why you killed him. Then you know he's dead. I didn't, until they took me to the prefect's office. But I gave him the slip, came up the back stairs... That looks like your innocence, doesn't it? What are you driving at? I can guess what happened between you and Petrov. You're not going to put me on the spot for murder. I'll tell the police everything. But gentlemen, Monsieur Belescu has not been in all evening. That came from his room. Come on, open up. Guard door. What happened? Charlotte Ronell shot me. That way. Get her. Who is the lady? Foreign agent. She and Petrov are working together. Shipping munitions. Did you see a woman come out the door? Why, yes. She was beautiful. Which way did she go? She went down the elevator. <laughs> She turns a woman is escaping in the elevator. Come, haste, most urgent. Have gentlemen removed the hospital. Excuse me. Excuse me. Down the stairs. Now that the Petrov case is finally closed, I should like to propose a toast uh, in coffee to our young friends. May they have all the happiness that they deserve. Oh, yeah. Good, Good, luck. Luck. Good luck. And to the men who uncovered one of the most dangerous spy rings that ever threatened the safety of France, Charlie Chan. Ah, thank you. Thank you so much. Quite true, spy ring brought to light. But murderer of Petrov, not yet uncovered. Not yet? You mean we have to start the whole case all over again? Well, if it wasn't Charlotte Ronell, who was it? May I have missing clearance papers, please? Antoine? What? What did he have to do with it? Please. Thank you. 
Charlie, are you accusing him of Petrov's murder? In humble opinion, murder is harsh word for act committed in defense of country. Then you knew all the time, sir? Yes. For a moment, Mr. Belescu said he saw taxi driver searching for something in street. I knew it was coin which I found in your trouser cuff, indicating you were person who arrived in taxi when Mr. Belescu was still in house. All right, Antoine, come on, out with it. Yes, sir. I had just come in the back way when I overheard Mr. Belescu in a violent quarrel with Mr. Petrov. I started for my quarters, but Mr. Belescu's next word stopped me. He said that getting clearance papers for a shipload of ammunition on the eve of a possible war should be worth more than 100,000 francs, and that unless Mr. Petrov paid, the Medusa would not leave port. Mr. Belescu got his money and left. Go on, please. Gentlemen. Only half an hour before, I'd seen my son off to the front. When I heard Mr. Petrov phoning the message that would send ammunition to an enemy who would use it against our boys, perhaps my own son, I lost my head. I ran in and grabbed the clearance papers. He dropped the phone and reached for a pistol in his desk. I seized his wrist and in the struggle I... I shot him. Why you not come at once to police? I was afraid they wouldn't believe me. But why not? Earlier in the evening, I had brought you Mr. Madero's threatening letter. After Mr. Chan discovered I had opened it, I felt that they would regard me as a suspicious person and... Just a minute. Do you realize that all this would be used against you at the trial? Yes, monsieur. I faced death before. And you'll face it again. It is the law. But have you ever faced a general pinning a quad of gear on your chest and kissing you on both cheeks? Monsieur Romain? Yes. From the Premier's office, special. Mm -hmm. This is good news, friends. There will be no war. No war? My boy will come back. Good. No more gas masks. The Premier and the British Prime Minister have been invited to Munich for a conference. Wise man has said, beware of spider who invite fly into parlor. Mm -hmm.